One of them was entitled A Harvest of Death. You're looking at a, an open field, there are no visible fences, there's kind of a mound or a rise in the distance, and what appears to be a contiguous wood line along the horizon. Uh, no indication uh, was given by Gardner as to where on the battlefield this was taken. Now the other photograph that was a mystery photograph was called Field Where General Reynolds Fell. Now this photograph shows a group of bodies in the foreground, there's a depression in the background, and then you go up this long ridge in the background with the woods on top of the ridge, and you have a burial detail. Now this caption was specific enough, Field Where General Reynolds Fell, to place this at McPherson's Woods. Of course we all know that General Reynolds was not killed in a field, but he was actually killed at the edge of McPherson's Woods. So presumably this photograph was photographed somewhere near the boundary of McPherson's Woods. Uh, there are no buildings, no boulders, nothing uh, particularly distinctive. Uh, I could not find any place in the vicinity of McPherson's Woods that matched. Not only does Gardner not link the Harvest of Death photo with the field where General Reynolds fell photograph, but in one photograph he describes the dead as Union dead, and in the other photograph he describes the dead as rebels. Although these photos were labeled completely differently, Frazzanito discovered a connection. In 1962, I was roaming the battlefield with a copy of Gardner's sketchbook, and I think it's this guy who's off to the left in the Harvest of Death photograph. He's very distinctive. He's off to the right in the field where Reynolds fell photograph. And what's distinctive about him is that his left arm is, is over his head. Because all these other guys are lying flat. This guy is distinctive. And I said, my goodness, that's the same guy. Now, these photographs at first appearance look completely different. And that's because the angles taken were, were, were substantially different. But when you actually sit down and examine this soldier and then go soldier by soldier, and voila, they are the identical soldiers. I came up with this diagram, which was published in Journey in Time. And the camera angle difference from the field where Reynolds fell photograph, if you turn 135 degrees to the right, you will get this photograph. And I figured it would be a simple thing to go back onto the first day's battlefield and find the site where you have this configuration. And much to my surprise, even with this new information, I still couldn't find the site. Well, the highest likelihood is somewhere in the vicinity of the intersection of the Emmitsburg Road and the Wheatfield Road. All of the locations of Gardner's death studies identified so far have been on the southern portion of the battlefield, east of the Emmitsburg Road. The large number of Union bodies in the Harvest of Death image suggests it was taken in an area where a sizable clash occurred, an area such as the nearby Trossel Farm. It's an organized line of battle. It's not retreating soldiers. These aren't men who were shot down in an advance or in falling back. They were in a stationary position for a time, and um, it's a unit that suffered really substantial losses. There was indeed a federal regiment that sustained heavy casualties near the Trossel Farm, the 120th New York. The 120th New York is interesting because there's documentation that that unit made a very stubborn stand in the open, in a line of battle, and that photograph is a unit that's just like that. The federal soldiers depicted in the photographs are missing their shoes. This suggests that they had fallen in a region later overrun by Confederate forces, forces that often took with them the shoes of the better equipped Union Army. The Trossel Farm was indeed a region captured by rebels. Unfortunately, although there are very good reasons why this might be the site of the Union death studies, there is one big problem. The landscape simply doesn't completely match the two camera angles 135 degrees apart. I hope before I die somebody finds the site, but I now have enough information that I have published and the best versions of the views that um, if you put all the information together, uh, when the site is found it should look pretty close to those photographs. Maybe someday William Frazanito will solve the great mystery. Until then, the search continues.
am very proud of these discoveries and I'm delighted that this amount of attention is being shown now 24 years later. This is really what history is all about. The more information you have, the more puzzles there are that emerge and the more fascinating history becomes. For more information, check out the following books by William Frazzanito. Gettysburg, A Journey in Time, Early Photography at Gettysburg, Gettysburg Then and Now, Gettysburg Then and Now Companion, Gettysburg Bicentennial Album, Antietam, The Photographic Legacy of America's Bloodiest Day, and Grant and Lee, The Virginia Campaign, 1864 to 1865. If you like history, you'll love Greystone's American History Store at 461 Baltimore Street in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's the best place to find documentaries produced by Greystone, PBS, A&E, and Discovery. And you'll also find a wide variety of books to enlighten, entertain, and educate history buffs of all ages. Ed Bars, world-renowned author and historian on the Battle of Gettysburg, takes you on a driving tour of the battlefield like you've never had before. Listen to the Civil War Trust Battlefield Audio Tour. Also available from Greystone, the official National Park Service Audio Tour of the Gettysburg Battlefield. Drive it and you'll visit the exact spots where soldiers of the North and South fought bravely during the largest battle ever on American soil. Hello, this is Craig Hafner, creator of the Unknown Civil War. And I want to tell you that Greystone has now produced another famous civilian story. It's called Tilly Pierce of Gettysburg.